I would like to begin by addressing a tweet published by Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, a Democrat of Minnesota. And I do so with some reticence and trepidation because we have to make decisions as hosts on shows like this, what to respond to and what to use our valuable on-air time dealing with. And if we were to chase down every single thing that is said that's false, misleading, or just a lie by just the members of the squad, for example, we would do virtually nothing else in our three-hour program every day because it's just a torrent of misinformation from that crew. Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib are especially egregious violators, and often we ignore what they have to say, just as often we ignore what some of the more radical or colorful backbenchers on the Republican side might have to say. It's good fodder for outrage, but it's not really worth our time. But in this case, I think it is worth our time because this is a tweet that has gone very viral. I'm looking down at my screen here. I see it's got more than 12,000 retweets, nearly 60,000 likes. This is getting shared widely, and it reflects a number of beliefs, almost pieces of quasi-religious dogma held on much of the left. And in the wake of the Dobbs decision and the overturning of Roe versus Wade, you have once again a very loud, vociferous, intensive effort to demand, quote unquote, reforms to our system and particularly at the Supreme Court. Because the left tells us our norms and institutions must be protected unless they result in political outcomes that they dislike, in which case burn the institutions to the ground. That is a recurring theme with many so-called progressives and the squad, sort of the tip of the spear. But this is not really, unfortunately, frighteningly, that fringe of a view anymore on the left. We talked about yesterday the poll that shows only about one third of Americans in favor of court packing, for example. It's a very extreme institution raising idea. It's institutional arson. That number hasn't really changed over the last couple of years in polling, thank goodness. But the people who are most committed to it, most supportive of it, are people within the Democratic base. And they have huge megaphones and amplification on social media. They generally don't get fact-checked or warning labels or suspended for their misinformation because, I think, according to a lot of these big tech companies, Lying for the cause is acceptable. So I think when they put out this stuff, to a certain extent, we have to pick our battles, but it is worth responding. So Ilhan Omar is saying that you need to kill the filibuster in the Senate and pass radical abortion legislation. You need to add other reforms to the Supreme Court like term limits. And she's also calling for adding seats, expanding the court, i.e. court packing. And here's the way she's justifying it in this tweet today. She says, as was actually a few days ago, five justices, I'm quoting now, these are the claims by Ilhan Omar, five justices confirmed by a POTUS who lost the popular vote, four lied under oath, two credibly accused of sexual assault, one seat literally stolen, one's spouse implicated in a coup attempt. She writes, it is not enough to tell people to vote. We need a comprehensive plan to fix this court. And then come all the ideas like court packing and busting up the Senate as well. So I would like to just quickly go through and debunk or at least address all of her points, which are factually wrong in nearly every count. She says five justices were confirmed by a president who lost the popular vote. First of all, presidents don't confirm justices. That's the Senate. Just civics 101, Congresswoman, but whatever. I know what you mean. She meant nominated by a president who lost the popular vote. Well, here's the issue with that. 
she is lumping into that category Justices Roberts and Alito, who were nominated by President George W. Bush. The thing is, they were both nominated after President Bush won the popular vote in 2004. Of course, the sixth conservative on this list, Clarence Thomas, he was nominated by George H.W. Bush, who won a landslide election in 1988. But what she's kind of doing here, Omar, is suggesting that George W. Bush is kind of an illegitimate president because he didn't win the popular vote the first time, but then he was reelected by the American people with a majority of the popular vote. And then he put these two justices on the court. But they, I guess, don't count because she's sticking with the 2000 result, not the 2004 more relevant result. Also, I'm pretty sure I've been told many times that questioning the legitimacy of election wins is a very bad thing. I guess, except when they do it. Right? That's that's the difference. When they do it, it's fine. I would also just remind the congresswoman that we don't elect presidents with the popular vote in this country. That's not how we do it. That's not the system. It's not how campaigns are designed. The rules are the electoral college. If you want to get rid of it, go about that constitutional work. It's going to be hard, very heavy lift, but go for it. Otherwise, you're basically just questioning legitimacy based on a made up construct. Based on a metric that is irrelevant to the presidency and the winning thereof. And if you want to just sort of cherry pick certain facts, I will just point out to Ilhan Omar that two recently of the most popular justices on the left, Justice Breyer, who's just about to retire later this week. In fact, I believe it's tomorrow he's going to retire. He and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who passed away a few years ago, a lion of the left. They've made movies about her. They've tattoos of her. They were both appointed by President Bill Clinton, who won a lower share of the popular vote than Donald Trump ever did. A lower share of the popular vote. Does that make them and their jurisprudence what, illegitimate, less important, less binding? Of course not. And if they want to play stupid games, they can win their own stupid prizes with made-up standards like this. All right, number, number two on the list, she says four of these justices lied under oath. We dealt with this claim at some length here on the show this week. Summary, that's a lie. And here's why. The left is saying, well, because... Kavanaugh and Gorsuch and Barrett, for example, all said that Roe versus Wade was settled law and precedent. They were lying because then they came in and reversed it. And as we slowly explained for the people in the back, what those three justices were doing in their confirmation hearings was just sticking to the standard known as the Ginsburg rule pioneered by Ruth Bader Ginsburg in her confirmation hearings during the Clinton administration, where you get asked about a case and an area of precedent, you recap what the precedent is, you call it precedent, you often can say things like, yes, it's settled law, and then you refuse to hypothetically weigh in on what you might decide if you were on the high court if the issue came before the court. That is what they did. That is not a lie. It's not even close to a lie. But if Ilhan Omar thinks it's a lie, she should start by demanding the impeachment of Justices Kagan and Sotomayor, who did the exact same thing on gay marriage, on guns, and then did what the left wanted them to do. If the standard is these conservatives lied, then the liberals lied too. Ilhan Omar doesn't believe that because she's not an honest person and or she's an ignorant person. It's probably a little bit of both in this case. All right, two of them, she says, are, quote, credibly accused of sexual assault. False. None of the justices are credibly accused of sexual assault, unless I'm unaware of certain credible allegations against Elena Kagan or something. She's making reference to Clarence Thomas and Brett Kavanaugh, obviously. And this is a smear that is not based in evidence or reality. Clarence Thomas was attacked by Anita Hill, who made a bunch of lurid claims about him. It was brought to the forefront during his very contentious hearings. Joe Biden himself said in an interview in 1998 that he believed on that committee 
that Anita Hill was not telling the truth. Women in the office who worked with Hill and Clarence Thomas back in Thomas's previous role, the women in the office, none of them supported Anita Hill. All of them came out in support of Clarence Thomas at the hearing. FBI agents who were involved in the investigation promptly came out and called out what they said was Anita Hill lying about what she had told them. And at the time, by roughly a two to one margin, after the American people watched that circus, that character assassination attempt against Justice Thomas, by a two to one margin, with no gender gap, by the way, the American people believed him, not her. She did not have evidence. She was not credible. People did not believe her. And the FBI called her a liar. Then, of course, there is now Justice Kavanaugh where we don't even have evidence that his accuser, all the allegations against him have been either debunked or have no evidence at all. There were really, ultimately, there was one serious allegation by Dr. Ford, and there's not even evidence that Kavanaugh and Ford ever met, let alone her story being true. And the FBI did look into it, and the only thing that they found is that her dear friend, who is her star witness, said that she was pressured to lie about Brett Kavanaugh. And that best friend or that dear friend of Dr. Ford ultimately concluded that her friend was lying and that she did not believe the story. Same with Dr. Ford's own father. Not one shred of actual evidence. So that's a slander and a smear against those two. Omar says that another seat was literally stolen I think she's talking about Merrick Garland going into then Justice Gorsuch and the Republicans holding that seat open in 2016. She can take that up with Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden. That was their standard back in 1992 and 2007. The Republicans were playing by Ilhan's party's rules on that. It's not stolen. That's a delegitimization tactic. It's not true. And if she thinks that what the Republicans did was unforgivable, again, go back and talk to Biden and Schumer. This was their standard that they articulated. And the rules were followed. She might not like the rules, but they were followed. And finally, she says one of the spouses, Ginny Thomas, is implicated in a coup attempt. I'll just say this. Ilhan Omar, of all people, might not want to get into a guilt by association game. And she really might not want to talk about spouses. I'm just saying. Fact check of Congresswoman Ilhan Omar on these viral allegations. We have to fight back with the facts, and we will. 